Hello, this is Sandra Osterberis bringing you a few words of Bible from the heart of biblical Israel. This week's Torah portion is Shlach, and in this Torah portion we meet, of course, the ultimate sin of the nation of Israel, the sin of the spies. They send ten, uh, 12 spies, one, one representative of each tribe, to go in and scout out the land, and instead of coming back with a report of encouragement and wonder and gratitude to God for uh, about because he's about to give us the bring us into this land and give us this land instead we get a completely different response a response that causes the nation not to want to go up to the land and as a result god saying that the entrance of the land will be delayed a generation that for 38 more years they will be wandering the desert as each individual of that generation dies out and only when the next generation is is the generation you know that's adults at that point uh, they will go into the land. Now, I'd like to focus on just a few verses that kind of shows the turning point in this whole thing. Because when they go out, it, it seems full of promise. Moses gives them instruction, and, and they're supposed to look at all these different things to, to determine the nature of the land. Uh, what kind of cities? Are they um, cities with, are they fortified cities, or are they open cities? Is there um, are there fruits and, and agriculture, or is it a barren land? Um, and they're supposed to, you know, check out these things, things that are, I would say, they're not, uh, it's not a military expedition, because when you have a military expedition, you're sending just one or two people, and they're doing it quietly. Twelve people coming into the land and then carrying back some of the produce of the land, that's quite obvious. So they're there more to, to give a report, not to, to plan any strategies. And what happens when they come back? Um, they start out okay. They show them these fruits that they that they brought back, and they say, and this is in, in uh, this is in chapter 13, verse uh, 27. Uh, they said, "We came to the land to which you have sent us, and it is a land flowing of milk and honey, and these are its fruits." So this the the first the first report, the beginning is very good. It's beautiful. Look at these big fruits. And, and it is, and it is indeed a rich land, a rich in produce and, and, and potential. But then it goes, and then we have this word in Hebrew, Ephes. Ephes means zero. Basically, what they're saying, but now they're going to cancel it all out. They basically say, but all that is worthless. Why? Because the nation who dwells in the land are very powerful. Their cities are very fortified, and we saw the giants there. Okay, and then it continues to mention all these different nations, um, hostile nations that are dwelling in that land. Okay, and Caleb sees where this is going, and he immediately interrupts them, and he says, um, he, he tries to silence the nation. Okay, and what does he says? He says, "We will go up, and we will inherit him, the land because we can defeat them." And then all the other spies, except for Joshua, of course, say we cannot go up to this land because they are more powerful than us. And so we have here basically two parallel statements. First, Caleb saying we can go up because we can defeat them. And on the other hand, the spies saying we cannot go up because we cannot defeat them. And what you realize at that point was that there was no difference in their report. The report itself, the factual part of the report, was absolutely factually correct. On the one hand, it's a rich land flowing with milk and honey, beautiful produce. On the other hand, big and powerful and fortified cities and all these hostile nations. All that was absolutely true. The problem was how they interpreted the facts. Caleb interprets the fact as, it's fine. We're going to go out to a great land, and we can do this. Why? It is clear to Caleb. It's not that he, he says, I have a military strategy. I can figure out how to defeat these nations. He's coming from a place of absolute faith. He never questions for a moment their ability to enter the land. In fact, he understands that that was never part of their mission. They weren't supposed to come to back and report whether or not they could conquer. It was clear they were going to conquer because... It is God who says to Moses, and this is the very beginning of chapter 13, send forth these people, they were scattered out the land, which I am giving to the children of Israel. 
That's the assumption that God is giving the land and he's, they're just saying, figure out what it looks like. So you're more prepared to what you're going to, to what you're going to meet when you get there. Okay. As opposed to these other people that not only had a different interpretation of the facts that they observed, but had a completely different interpretation of what their mission was. Okay. For some reason, they got it into their head that there was a question mark as to whether they would be able to go in. They forgot that it is God who's running the affair. They forgot that it is God who said from the beginning, I'm bringing you in here. That was the established fact. So if that's the established fact, and this is the very nation that just over a year earlier, okay, had witnessed personally the, 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 the plagues, the parting of the Red Sea, the exodus from Egypt, they knew that if God said, I'm bringing you into the land, this is the same God who defeated the Egyptians, why was it that they, it was so hard for them to believe that God was also going to help them defeat all these other Canaanites. Now, clearly, this is not a question of logic. This is a question of lack of faith, okay? Their faith slipped, uh, and, and they didn't have the confidence in, in God, in, in faith. And it is for that reason, of course, that God said they can't go into the land. Because if they're going to go into the land not being absolutely 100% con confident that God will be with them, they will not succeed. And I will say that today, when I look at our existence in the land of Israel, we have a similar conflict ongoing, okay? We have big problems in the land. We have hostile nations that live among us and who surround us, okay? And thank God we're in the land already. And against unbelievable odds, the very fact that the state of Israel came into existence at a point when we were very weak, very poor, very few in number, and yet managed to overcome our enemies and, and come into existence. The fact that we were then able to defeat our enemies in 1967 and not only hold on to what we have, but expand uh, the land and, 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 and take possession of what was rightfully ours in the first place, the heart of biblical Israel, all that is, is amazing. And, and those facts are not in dispute. The question is, what do you do with those facts? Do you understand that God has been with us so far? And therefore, it is our job to just do the best we can in the confidence that God will come and bless our efforts and make sure it works? Or do we look at everything in front of us and say, impossible. We have to give up. We have to give in. We have to give away some land. We have to, um, you know, we have to placate some of, of the nations. Um, withdraw or, or, or give up on some of our essential positions um, because we feel we need some of these other nations. Now, now I'm not saying, of course, to be stupid. Uh, we have to be practical. But on the other hand, our, our foreign policy, everything we do here in the land of Israel has to be human endeavors. Okay, when, when the nation of Israel goes into the land of Joshua, they don't sit back. They fight. They plan. They make strategies. Okay. They are human endeavors. They are dealing with the challenges surrounding them. But it's all on the basis of an assumption that God is going to help us, that God is going to deliver us. And I think that is the most fundamental lesson we have here. When it comes to the nation of Israel coming into the land of Israel, we have to believe that this is where God wants us to be. And that ultimately, he will bless our efforts and ensure that we will indeed, as Caleb says, we can defeat our enemies. We will go up to this land. Have a wonderful weekend. Shabbat Shalom. I hope you enjoyed that video. And we'd like to be sure you're getting all of our video content. So just click on the subscribe button below as well as on the notification bell. And that way you will have easy access to all our material. We look forward to staying in touch with you. God bless you and have a wonderful day.